My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, when Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an became the Khalifa of this Ummah the 13th year after the Hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the great Sahabi Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma was about 15 years old at that time. And Umar radiallahu an in his majlis, in his sitting, the consultants and those he would ask for their opinions from who sat with him were usually from, they said, Ashaq Badr, meaning the elders who had fought during the war of Badr, from the older Sahaba. With this, during this time, he used to always bring with him Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma to sit with them. And some of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they felt this was a bit strange. Why is this young man amongst us? What's so unique about him? We also have children his age who are youngsters. Why aren't we inviting more youngsters? Why is he the only youngster amongst us? So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, he wanted to teach these companions a lesson of why he had chosen to have Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma with him, with the elders from the Sahaba. One day he asked them, what do you guys say about Surah Al-Nasr? And he read the Surah, to the end of the Surah. Meaning, what do you say about it? What is the tafsir? What is the meaning of these ayat? Each one of them, or many of them said their opinion that it was, the meaning was that we are victorious and we conquer a place that we need to what? Be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to praise Him. Other ones said we don't know and other ones remain quiet. And then he turned to Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma and he said, what do you say about the meaning of this surah? He said, this is a sign to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that his death has neared. And it's upon him to prepare for death. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ The Nasr, the victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes. And the Fath, meaning the conquering. The Fath here is the Fath, the conquering of Mecca. And this is a sign for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to prepare for death. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكْ Then to praise your Lord. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ And seek the forgiveness from Him. Verily He is the Tawab of the one who accepts the sin. He accepts the repentance when you make istighfar from your sins. Umar radiallahu an turned to Abdullah ibn Abbas and he said, this is the same understanding that I have from this surah. It was sent down to tell the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that his mission has pretty much been accomplished and it's time for him to prepare for death. There are many benefits, my dear brothers and sisters, that we gain from this story. Two main benefits that we're going to focus on in today's khutbah but before we do that, the question comes all of the time when we hear stories like this. Say, so look at the youth of the Sahaba. Look what they reached, look what they did. And what is wrong with the youth today? What went wrong? And I believe that there are three key elements to the situation of the youth today. The first of which is the fact that we have no true and good programs for the youth. We talk a lot and sometimes we organize some pro programs that we see suitable for them. When we should be empowering them to come up with these programs and to make programs that are suitable for them. And the days that we live in, many times the parents are from Mars and the children are from Earth. That's how they look at us. Because they say, we don't understand the world they're living in. And a lot of the times, many of the parents don't understand their children. And this is one of the main problems. The other issue, or the second point, is the poor and improper Islamic upbringing. That they're not taught proper Islamic tarbiyah from a young age. And thirdly, that we do not empower them. Even if we teach them, we do not empower them. And this is the topic that we want to talk about in today's khutbah, which is empowering our youth. When you look at the story 
of Umar ibn Khattab, my Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiyallahu anhuma, you see that Abdullah ibn Abbas, he had the proper tarbiyah, the proper upbringing from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and from his family. And Umar ibn Khattab, when he saw that, he empowered him. He empowered him. And this is what we need to do to our youth today if we want them to excel. Not just to teach them the, the right way, but to give them the tools and then to empower them. When you look into the history of the establishment of Islam and how Islam was established, look in the Meccan era, during the time in Mecca, one of the key roles that was, was played during that time was done through the base, the headquarters of the Muslims during that time. Dar al-Arqam ibn Abi al-Arqam. The house of al-Arqam. Al-Arqam, who was he? From the early ones to become Muslim, who was a teenager at that time. Some we look at as a young child today, miskeen, yeah, he's, he's a teenager. He was a teenager who was a man who stepped up to serve his deed and offered his house to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be the headquarters for the Muslims to come and to learn their deen. Even though that was very dangerous for him, it could have cost him his life. But yet, he wanted to serve his deen at that young age. And from that house, from that house, another young man in his 20s during that time came there and accepted Islam. He was raised and taught and given the tarbiyah from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam directly. And that young man, Musa ibn Umair, was chosen for the most noble job at that time, which was to represent the Muslims, to be the first ambassador for the Muslims and establishing the first Muslim country in Medina. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam chose this young man out of all of the Sahaba to go and to represent the Muslims, to go and to teach the new Muslims in Medina Islam and to spread Islam to the non-Muslims. What was the outcome? That they said no house in Medina, there was no house left except for Islam entered into that house. Meaning, at least a few people in that house accepted Islam. At least the people in the house knew the message of Islam. And then Medina was established and it was ready for the hijrah, for the migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and of the companions Radiallahu Anhu. When you look into those from the Sahaba who preserved knowledge for this Ummah, who were the main Sahaba who preserved this deen, who preserved the Qur'an, who preserved the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It was narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, خُذَ Quran min arba To learn the Qur'an from four, from four of the Sahaba. I mean, they're the best in the Qur'an. If you want to learn the Qur'an, go to these Sahaba, find them, one of these four. Three of the four were from the youngsters of the Sahaba. Mu'adh ibn Jabal, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and Salim, Mawla Abi Hudayfa. All of them were from the youngsters. The fourth one being Ubay ibn Ka'b radiallahu anhu. Three of them from the youngsters. Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu an, who accepted Islam at the age of 18 and died at the age of 33 during the Ta'un, the plague of Amwas, which was a disease that would spread. The Prophet told him about this plague that would spread and that it would kill and wipe out many of the Sahaba. The leader of Asham during that time who was the Amir, Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah radiallahu an, when he became sick with the Ta'un, and he knew he was about to die, he made Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu an, the new leader. Eventually he became sick and he died radiallahu an as well, at the age of 33. And that was the year 18 after the Hijrah. Meaning that Mu'adh was in his 20s was in his mid-twenties during the time the Prophet ﷺ was in Medina. Early twenties and mid-twenties. And the Prophet ﷺ said, take the Qur'an from Mu'adh ibn Jabal. Learn the Qur'an from Mu'adh ibn Jabal. And he also said about Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu an, at this young age, he said, A'lam ummati bi al-halal wal-haram Mu'adh ibn Jabal. He said, the most knowledgeable of my ummah, 
about halal and haram is Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu an. He also said about Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu an. He said Mu'adh amam al-ulama ratwa. That Mu'adh, he's in front of the ulama, the other scholars. Ratwa. What does ratwa mean? The scholars said that the word ratwa means in the Arabic language either as far as the eyes can see or as far as the arrow can go. That's how much advanced he is about other scholars and he's from the youngsters of the Sahaba. Radiallahu an. If you look at the ones who preserved the hadith, the famous seven narrators from the Sahaba radiallahu anhum that Imam al-Suyuti mentioned in his book al alfiya which is 1,000 verses of poetry and the knowledge of mustalah, the science of hadith. He said, وَالْمُكْثِرِينَ فِي رِوَايَةِ الْأَثْرِ أَبُوْ هُرَيْرَ يَلِيهِ بِنْ عُمَرِ وَأَنَسٌ وَالْبَحْرُ كَالْخُدْرِيِّ وَجَابِرٌ وَزَوْجَةُ النَّبِيِّ The seven who were the famous narrators of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Huraira, Abdullah ibn Umar, Anas ibn Malik, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, Jabir ibn Abdullah, and Aisha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu anhu. From these seven, all of them were from the young Sahaba. Five of them were from the very young Sahaba, from the teenagers. In fact, Abdullah ibn Abbas became a teenager at the time of, of the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jabir radiallahu an was a teenager when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Medina and at the time of the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam around 27, 28 years old. Abu Huraira radiallahu an who migrated from Yemen to Medina during the seventh year of the Hijrah he was 28 years old when he came to Medina also from the young Sahaba. These young Sahaba were the ones who learned the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they narrated to the ummah. The most narrations of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam come from these seven from the Sahaba. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma was known, is known as the greatest scholar of this ummah. The most knowledgeable when it comes to the tafsir of the Quran. The most knowledgeable when it comes to the fiqh. Around 11 years old at the time of the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or 13 years old around the time of the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Around 15, when Abu Bakr died radiallahu an. During this time, as a young teenager, he said to one of his friends, who was from the Ansar, a young, a young lad like himself from the Ansar, who said, he said, let's go to the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while there's still so many of them here, let's go learn the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from them. And he said to him, who needs you now? Why waste time on that now? Not waste time, but he said, why put your time into that when they don't need you, nobody needs you now. Why put your time into this when people don't need you? But Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah, he didn't listen to him. He went and he learned from the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he taught us all a lesson. They said he would go at the time of Dhuhr when it's very hot in Medina. And perhaps that Sahabi was taking his qaylula, he was taking his nap. And he didn't want to disturb him out of adab, out of respect. He said, I would sit on his doorstep and wait till he would come out for the prayer. He said, I'd have to cover myself with my garment from the wind and from the heat. And as they would come out, they would see Ibn Am Rasulullah, the cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They said, if you called me, I would have came to you. And he said, no, it's your right upon me to come to you. Why? Because the knowledge, you're supposed to come to the knowledge to take the knowledge, not the knowledge come to you. This is how you obtain the knowledge. And through striving and persevering, mm -hmm. radiallahu an, and through the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he became the great scholar of this ummah that we know. In fact, when you look into the books of the scholars of hadith, when they talk about the narrators of hadith, they have a quote for four of the youngsters of the Sahaba who are known for their piety and for their worship 
and for their vast knowledge of the deed. All of them who were young teenagers during the time of the Prophet wasallam, known as Al-Abadil Al-Arba, the four Abdullahs, the scholars of Hadith. They said Al-Abadil Al-Arba, the four Abdullahs, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Amr, and Abdullah ibn Zubair, radiallahu anhu. From the great Sahaba, from the youngsters, from the youth. When we look at their upbringing, what made them so special? This is the question all of us have in our mind now. Wow, this is amazing. Look what they did for this ummah. But what made them so unique? What was the tarbiyah? And if you look into their tarbiyah, into their upbringing, you'll see that it focused on many areas. But let's mention three of them. Three of the major impacts that, that they had on their lives that made them so strong in their iman and made them strive for this deed. Jundub ibn Abdullah and also Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhum, they mentioned a similar narration about their upbringing. And I want you to pay attention to this and how we teach our kids the Qur'an today. And pay attention to how they learn the Qur'an and why the Qur'an had such a huge impact on themselves. They said, Kunna nata'allam al-iman qabla nata'allam al-Qur'an that we would learn Iman first and then we would learn the Qur'an. They know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He should be known. They know who Allah is. They have proper Iman. And then they would learn the Qur'an after knowing Allah, after knowing the pillars of, his, of, of Iman and understanding it and having an impact on their life. He said, then we would learn the Qur'an. فَزِدْنَا bihi imana, And then we would increase in our Iman through the Qur'an. So they would focus on the Iman. Focus on the Qur'an and then they would see the implementation of Islam in their parents. They would see it in the Prophet ﷺ in front of them. They would see it in the society, in their own parents, in their own households. Therefore, when it came their turn to implement Islam and strive for Islam, they started striving from a young age. Look at the stories. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu an, anhuma, who was... 13 years old during the battle of Badr. He comes and he wants to take part in the battle. The Prophet sallallahu saw him being very small and he turned him back. He said, but I can hold the sword. And he, he gave, I can fight with the sword. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. He wants to fight to defend Islam, defend the Muslims. The Prophet sallallahu sent him back for being too small. And then during the battle of Khandaq, he gave him permission, radiallahu anhu. From the Sahaba as well, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu, he mentioned that during the battle of Badr, he said, I saw my little brother Umair hiding amongst the troops. He would hide over there, then he would hide over there, hide, changing his position all of the time. So he went to him and he said, Ya Akhi, my brother. He said, what is it that you're doing? He said, I don't want Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to see me because I'm small. And he said, he might send me home, might send me back. So he said, I want to be and I want to be here and fight. He said, perhaps Allah will bless me with the shahada in the path of Allah. Allah Akbar. And the battle of Uhud as well, from the youngsters, from the youth, who wanted to take part in the battle, Rafi ibn Khudaj and Samra ibn Jundub, radiallahu anhu. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was looking at the troops, he saw these two young, these two young uh, sahaba, and he wanted to send them back. But the Sahaba told him that Rafi' he excels when it comes to the Rami, to shooting. He shoots the arrows with perfection. So the Prophet ﷺ tested him and saw him shooting the arrows and he was perfect, perfect in shooting the arrows. So he allowed him to stay with the archers during the battle. Samra being turned back, he started to cry. And he went to his stepfather and he said he gave permission to Rafi' but didn't give me permission. But he said, I can beat Rafi' in wrestling. I'm stronger than Rafi'. He said, please tell the Prophet ﷺ. His stepfather went to the Prophet ﷺ and told him. So the Prophet ﷺ said, bring them to me. He said, wrestle in front of me. Bismillah. See who wins. And sure enough, Samra was able to beat Rafi' in wrestling. So the Prophet ﷺ gave him permission as well to fight in the battle of Uhud. The Prophet ﷺ empowered the Sahaba. He empowered the youth. Look at the story before his death, 
Who was the commander? Who was the general who was chosen for the army that was going to fight the Romans? The army that had Abu Bakr al-Siddiq in it, that had Umar al-Khattab, and from the elders, from the Sahaba, from the most important from the Sahaba, who was the commander? Usam ibn Zayd radiallahu anhu. What was his age during that time? 18 years old. Some of the Sahaba didn't understand from the elders. And they didn't understand how that young man could be their, their leader. The Prophet wasallam became angry as it was narrated in Sahih Muslim. And he stood on the minbar and scolded the Sahaba who went against his decision to make Usam ibn Zayd the commander of the army. What about the story of the six-year-old Imam? Amr ibn Salama radiallahu an, who during the time his people, they learned the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Imam in the Salat, the one who leads the prayer, should be the one who is better in the Quran, memorization and recitation. And the best reciter they had, and the one who had memorized the most, was this Imam, was this six or seven year old boy as it came in Sahih al-Bukhari. Six or seven, a young boy, but they made him the Imam who led the prayer. And look at this tarbiyah lesson that we gain as Muslims, as an ummah. When we see that young imam, what does this teach us? It teaches the, all of us and it teaches the youth the importance of obeying and following the sunnah of Rasulullah wasallam. When he said the best of you in the Quran, they didn't say, yeah, but he's young. No, no, no we don't want some young guy leading us in prayer. He's too young. This is the sunnah. He leads us. Bismillah. And imagine the impact that has on the other youth as well. When they see now he's the leader, he's the one who's leading the prayer, it's going to encourage them to strive to learn as well. This is how the Prophet wasallam and how the Sahaba would empower the youth. <coughs> Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu an, he said that my people, his uncles, and the people from his tribe, they were very proud of him, of how much he had memorized of the Quran at a young age. They took him, and praised him in front of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tested him on the Quran. He tested his hip, and he found that it was amazing what this young boy had done. If this happened to any of us, where a young person came to us today, a teenager who was reading the Quran, what would we say? We would say, "Mashallah, Tabarakallah, he's going to have a great future." And we would stop there. But how was the thinking of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He didn't say he's just going to have a great future. He's going to have a great present right now. He's going to be great right now. We're going to empower him right now. When he saw his potential, he said to him that I do not know the language of the Jews. And I don't trust them. He said, therefore, I need someone to learn their language who can read to me their letters and translate to me. Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu, he said, within 15 days, 15 nights, he said, as it hadn't gone by, except for that I learned the language. And one of the narrations, I perfected the language. And then he said, I would read the letters that they sent to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam empowered the youth to excel. And that's why they reached what they reached, because they weren't just given the tools. They weren't just encouraged, but they were empowered. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'ani wa sunnah wa nafa'ani wa yaakum bima fihi ma min al-ayati wa al-hikmah aqoolu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim Bismillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salam ala nabiya Mustafa wa ba'd My dear brothers and sisters in Islam If we were to raise our children properly and they were to Follow the sunnah of reading Surah Al-Kahf every Friday. What is one of the main messages that will be sent to them? That they are a group of youth who believed in their Lord, so we increase them in guidance. When they're reading that every Friday, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about a fitya, a group of youth, youngsters. He would say, that's me. The story is for me. The story is about me. I'm a youngster. If we teach them the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
about the seven who will be in the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sabba'yudhillahum Allah. When there's no shade except for His subhanahu wa ta'ala on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, from them, Shabu Nasha fi ibadatillah. One of them is the youth who was raised in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was raised as a young man practicing his deen. We the parents show them the way. We give them the tools and we empower them. And then after that we say, it's up to you. It's up to you now to empower yourself and to hold on to the path. And if you do, you will be from the ones who receive this noble description, this noble honor and this great reward of being from those who will be in the shade of Allah on the day of judgment when there's no shade of His. The youth who came up in the obedience, the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worshiping Allah, being obedient to Allah, doing that which He's supposed to do, and staying away from that which is haram. If we were to teach our children our history and let them know the greatness, as we heard today, the examples from the Sahaba, from the youth, the scholars, the warriors, the commanders, the rulers of the Muslims at a young age. And it didn't just stop there. All throughout the history, look, who was the one who opened and conquered Sindh and Punjab, modern-day Pakistan? Who was it? Muhammad ibn al-Qasim al-Thaqafi, rahimahullah. How old was he when he became the commander of the army? 17 years old. Al Qustantaniya and Turkey, Istanbul today. Who conquered that? What was his name? Muhammad al Fatih, Rahimahullah. How old was he when he conquered? 24 years old. When did the mission start? From a young age, a youngster, a teenager, a young boy. This was his objective is to follow in the footsteps of his father, Murad al Thani, Rahimahullah, to be from the one who conquers Al Qustantaniya. These are the youth of this ummah. Once they're given the tools and they're given the direction and then they are empowered, they can do amazing things. We always hear the statement that the youth are the future, which is true. And the, they're going to be the future no matter what. But they're going to be either a future of khair and barakah and blessings for this ummah or they're going to be a future of sharr of evil and destruction for the Ummah. And I will leave you today, my dear brothers and sisters, with a quote from Malcolm X, rahimahullah ta'ala, who said, the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. The future belongs to those who prepare for it today. ثُمَّ يَعْلَمُوا رَحِمَ اللَّهُ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَمَرَكُمْ بِأَمْرُ بدا بي بنفسه ثم ثن بملائكة الكرام فقال عز وجل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما ويقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى عليه بواحدة صلى الله عليها بعشرة اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وانعم على نبينا محمد ورضى الله من الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وانسار الصحابة أجمعين